Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jeremy Lapidus. Today is Wednesday, November 13th. If you are just tuning in, we just went over the NBA Power Rankings. Cleveland Cavaliers at the top for the first week. We haven't had a number one stay through the first three versions of these power rankings. Excited to see if they can stay up there for next week. In this segment, we turn our attention to college football. The college football playoff race came out last night. The rankings, the second one by the college football playoff committee, will break it down. Go through all 25 teams if I think they deserve to be there and my big takeaways from it. But before we do, remember, if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Or if you are on YouTube, you can use that super chat feature. If you do either of those two things, a message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you do have a burning question about sports, anything at all that you would like to ask, Go ahead and throw that in the comments. Throw it in the chat. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate everybody so much for sticking around, talking some sports with me here on a beautiful Wednesday, November 13th. But like I was saying, in this segment, we are going to get into the college football playoff poll. Again, the second week for the college football playoff poll to come out once again Oregon out the top. Do not have an issue with that. Where I've seen people have their first issue is with Texas at three. And I don't necessarily have an issue with Texas at three. I understand their their issues with it. They take a look at the teams behind them, Penn State, Indiana, BYU, Tennessee, and you say, why is Texas ahead of them? The reason is Texas has that passes the eye test better than just about any other team in the country. I love Texas at three, honestly, and I think there is a clear top three in the nation. I think they got the top three right. The question that I start to have is with Penn State, their signature wins are Illinois, Nebraska, right? You have those those same signature wins with Indiana, but Indiana is ranked behind them. Indiana undefeated. I know that Penn State has a loss. It is to Ohio State. That's that's the kind of that's the kind of team that you take a look at and you say, I don't know why they're above Indiana, to be completely honest with you. That's where I have my first issue. I think Indiana should be at four, BYU at five. I've also been a lot lower on Penn State than ever than basically everybody else all season long. When we talk about these rankings, again, I understand. I think Penn State should be in. But we talk about these teams. I think Penn State should be a little bit lower. The way that Tennessee is playing, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe they should be above them, maybe not. I think that's about where I draw the line. I'd put Penn State at six-ish, maybe maybe seven. Uh, The other question that people had is with Notre Dame. Obviously, Notre Dame has that brutal loss. They have that brutal loss to Northern Illinois. Not a good look, but ever since then, they've been playing some of the best football in the entire nation. They've got quality wins against Louisville, quality wins against a Navy team that at the time was undefeated. I like Notre Dame at eight. Miami my, Miami behind them? Sure, I guess. Miami takes a loss to a Georgia Tech team, but not, not but Miami and Georgia both ranked in the top five last week, both take a loss. Georgia now fall into twelfth, which has pushed them out of the college football playoffs. And that's another thing that I've seen people have issues with. Obviously, you see in the top five four teams from the Big Ten. And we we always knew there was there was going to be two conferences that were better. But everyone thought, I thought too, that the SEC was going to be the better of the two conferences. Clearly, it's looked like it's been the Big Ten right now. Now, the SEC has kind of cannibalized each other, which has made this chaos situation possible, where we see Georgia on the outside looking in. Not necessarily a bad thing here, but I'm starting to see some SEC truthers out here where they're saying, oh, a 10-2 and SEC team is better than an 11-1 This is better than an 11-1 Big Ten team, which I think is a lie, if I'm being completely honest with you. I think both of those conferences have very, very good football at the top, have not so great football at the bottom. And I think if if you're going just based on brand value of the SEC, I don't like it. And I think they, honestly, I think the college playoff, uh, committee did a very, very good job of not taking into account these brands. Now, obviously, it's going to be a part of the rankings. You're you're in college football. These are guys that are college football experts. They know. And they can't possibly watch every minute of every single game, even though they're supposed to be able to do that. This is a team that you take a look at or this is this is this is a this is a ranking that overall the top the 12 that are in there 
I don't really have any issue with. Obviously, uh, the the first two out. You have Georgia, the first one out, because Boise State gets that fifth conference, that group of five spot, and then SMU, which the only way SMU is getting in, unless some more chaos happens and SMU finds a way to win out. Even then, I don't think SMU gets in without a win in the ACC tournament. So I don't mind SMU being the first one out. The question does come when you look at some of these teams at the bottom. I will forever say, or at least for the rest of the season, say I don't think Mizzou belongs to be. I don't think Mizzou deserves to be ranked. Mizzou is a team that they have not looked impressive at all. Sure, they're ten and two, sure, but you have a couple of other teams that are, you know, have just the same record that I think would beat Mizzou. I think Mizzou loses to the two teams behind them. I think they lose to Army. I think they lose to Tulane. I also think that they lose to two, to uh, at least one of the teams that fell out of the top 25 uh, or the college football ranks in Iowa State. Maybe Pittsburgh. I don't think they lose to Pittsburgh, but still, this is a Mizzou team that hasn't really played anybody tight, and I'm a little concerned about that. Louisville at 19, I think, is a little high. I've been very high on this Louisville team. I still think that is a little bit high for them. Still, though, I'd like to see an Arizona State in instead of Mizzou, and I think that's my biggest issue that Mizzou is in there. LSU takes a huge hit. They're down seven spots to number 22. South Carolina jumps in at 21. I love that. The one the, there's there's another question here. Uh, head to head, how much does head to head matter, especially when it's earlier on in the season? They seem to have respected that with Kansas State and Colorado, but when it comes to LSU and South Carolina, they're seemingly throwing that away. I know South Carolina is coming off of a couple of big wins, but and LSU is coming off of a brutal loss to Alabama, but. LSU still beat South Carolina, and when they're right next to each other, I think you need to respect the head-to-head. So if you're going to have them right next to each other, I think LSU needs to be ahead of South Carolina. Washington State is an interesting case to get in because they're kind of like an independent school. They don't have that auto-bid option like you might when you are a Boise State, when you are an Army, when you're a Tulane, teams like that, right? They don't have that kind of group of five privilege as much as you can call it a privilege, I guess. Uh, but they, they're they they're kind of trying to put their resume up against everybody else. Right now, they've only lost one game. It was to Boise State, who I think as, as the committee says, is the 13th best team in the nation. It's not like they have to put a group of five team up there. They just did because Boise State has been a dominant force. They were number 12 last week. I think this is a team that in Washington State deserves a little bit more respect. They don't have that same kind of pedigree. Colorado, I think, deserves a little bit more talk to them as well. Um... But when we take a look at it, I don't have too many problems with this list. I thought the committee did a very good job this week, a much better job than last week overall. And of course, as we get closer, the picture is going to be more and more clear of who's going to get in. But it's going to be very, very messy at the bottom. There's going to be a big name that is this close to making it in that just doesn't because they have some weird tie-breaking loss. It, there's, it's going to be very tough to squeeze five SEC teams in there. It's going to be very tough to squeeze all every single one of those big brands. I'm not sure how it's going to go, but it's going to be chaotic, and that's what we love about college football. But let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the college football playoff poll. I thought, honestly, they did a really good job. But let me know what you think. We're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we'll finish up our show talking a little more college football. Some controversy this week having to do with the 12 o'clock time slot. We'll talk about that and more coming up next here on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network.